Hello, my friends. May God bless you all. May the Holy Spirit clarify your doubts, eliminate your doubts, and convince you of what is truthful, of what is real, of what's worth, of what truly brings and produces a fruit of life and eternal life. I was meditating here in the book of Isaiah, in chapter 49, in a certain verse, God says, he, he says to his people, to his children, he speaks to those who believe in him, and he says like this, in, in a more popular language, he says, kings, the kings, the foreign kings, shall be your foster fathers. Have you imagined, you who are watching me right now, who are always working for all the people, you are an employee, someone that gives your life for somebody else to satisfy their wants. See what God says, kings, kings shall be your foster fathers and their queens your, your nursing mothers, which means kings and queens shall bow down to you with their faces to the earth and lick up the dust of your feet. This is glorious. This here is God speaking, speaking in a current terminology. And he says, then you will know that I am the Lord. I am the Lord. For they shall not be ashamed who wait for me. They shall never be ashamed. So the problem here is that we human beings are subject to the circumstances. We are way too subject to what our eyes can see, which is what our ears hear. And because of that, it becomes very difficult, very difficult to trust and to maintain trust in God, in His Word, in the fulfillment of His Word. Of course, God knows of our frailty, of our smallness. He knows that we are mere worms that have, that we don't have in ourselves that exuberance that many times we think of ourselves. That's the truth, isn't it? The vanity or the vanities make us think that we are superior to others. But when we have a belly ache, even, you know, people, you, for example, when you have a belly ache and you are a person full of the Holy Spirit, me, myself, us, we have the Holy Spirit. But when the belly ache comes, we, we are feeling, isn't it? We feel that pain and we pray and we ask, Oh God, and the answer does not come. <laughs> oh, my dear friend, the answer does not come and we get a bit afflicted.
others get desperate, and some even doubt God's existence. But the fact is that when God says here that the kings will be our foster fathers and the queens will be the nursing mothers of our children, kings and queens will bow down to you with their faces to the earth and lick up the dust of your feet. God is, is coming to say, to tell us, trust in me, trust in me. Don't get desperate. Injustices, slanders, the criticisms, and all sort of suffering that you go through, be at peace, because I am with you. You will know, you will know that I am the Lord. Despite of the circumstances and the problems and the difficult situations, I am with you. For they shall not be ashamed who wait for me. They will never be ashamed. Come on, my friend. I know that it's not easy. As a human being, I know that it's not easy for us before the circumstances of life to feel comforted and to accept those difficult situations. But God remains the same. And I think, I believe that He even allows us to face difficult moments in order for us to, to know that we are mere mortal beings and nothing more than that. That is the truth. Paul, full of the Holy Spirit, the man whom God took him up to the third heaven, he heard words that couldn't be even expressed. And that's why he said, No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for those who love him. So we know that. Paul knew that. And yet, when the thorn, one thorn, a suffering, a pain, it wasn't an actual thorn from a rose bush, but a problem, a disease, an infirmity, a situation, a, a life, for example, isolated from others, abandoned by everything and everyone, a man who suffered, truly suffered, but who preached the gospel, but he had a personal pain, an individual pain, and he said, Oh my God, take this thorn away from me, this thorn, this messenger of Satan, take it away from me. And then God said to him, No, I will not take it away. And do you know why, Paul? In order for you not to become boastful, in order for you not to become proud, proud of the great revelations that were given to you. You heard words that no one has ever heard. You've seen things that no one has ever seen yet. No. I know you, Paul. You are my servant, was chosen, full of my spirit, but do not forget, you are a man. You are a man. And I want you to feel in your flesh, in your skin, that you are a man.
in order for you not to become vain and become proud. My grace is sufficient. Okay, Paul? My grace is sufficient. God's grace is sufficient. And when we have this conviction that God's grace is sufficient, then we get to know, we are fully aware that those who wait on the Lord will never, will never be ashamed, embarrassed, abandoned, never. They will remain forever. The key here, my friend, is to trust in God. Even in difficult moments, difficult times, everybody faces difficult moments. When a person is not of God, they commit suicide in the moment of despair. In the hardship of life, you know what, I'm going to end my life because I don't want to suffer anymore. That's the reality, thinking that they will end their suffering. So this is how the world is, rich, poor, ugly, beautiful, black, white. It doesn't matter who you are. You are a human being. You are a person. So, my friend, you are going to go through problems, difficult problems. You will face them, no doubt. Whether you believe in God or not, whether you have the Holy Spirit or not, all of us will face problems and tribulations and have difficult moments in life. The difference is that those who trust, those who wait, those who hope, in the Lord, in His Word, they will remain eternally. But those who do not have the Holy Spirit, obviously, they can't stand, they get discouraged, they give up, and many end their own life even. And that's why many people become alcoholics, they become drug users, they have a terrible life in the attempt to forget the suffering of their soul. But those who wait in the Lord, they will remain for all eternity. May God bless all of you, my friends, all of you. May all of us with the tribulations, with the deserts and the struggles of life, may we learn with them how to perfect our trust in God so that we will never be shaken. May God bless you all and I'll see you tomorrow in the name of Jesus. Amen.